an important application of the overcounting principle uh, is combinations. We want to derive a formula for the following problem. Uh, suppose we have a set containing n objects and we want to pick a subset containing r objects. How many possibilities are available to us? In other words, you can imagine that there is a class that has n students and r of those students are to be selected and the others not. How do we find the number of possible selections? Well, one way to think of it is to have all the students, 1 through n, stand in a row. So here they are standing in a row, so uh, the students are standing in this uh, row, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to n. And on the floor, there is a um, card of size r. So there are basically um, r places marked. First, r places marked. R uh, indicates that the individuals were selected. And the other card contains n minus 1 places, and those are the people that are not selected. So we then have uh, uh, list, we have listed all of them and simultaneously indicated which of them were selected and which were not selected. So for example, maybe the individuals, the, the students, are having the numbers 1, 2, all the way to n. So this would be maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to r, and then maybe the next ones all the way until uh, we reach a student with a label on the short, maybe a number on the short, which is n. So you can see this means that the first r students were selected and the remainder were not. Now, how many ways to place uh, students in those cards? It's linear ordering, so you can see that there are n factorial ways of placing those students in the card. But notice that here I could have interchanged 1 and 2 or any, into any permutation of the selected individuals does not move them outside of the card and therefore does not uh, make them not selected. So you see that uh, uh, the code 1, 2 all the way to R, if it begins this way I can permute the, the first R letters without uh, affecting the outcome. I change the code but not the outcome. Similarly, in the not chosen card, I can permute, uh, permute all the individuals and all the codes then without changing the outcome. For each particular uh, outcome, how many available chords are, are there? So you can see there are R factorial permutations here and N minus R permutations in the second card. So altogether, we have R factorial, N minus R factorial. So the denominator indicates how many codes are available for each unique outcome. And if I take uh, all the codes and divide by uh, the number of repetitions, I get the number of piles, which happen to be the same for each outcome. Each individual situation, each individual um, situation where some R individuals were chosen and R, N minus R individuals therefore not chosen will correspond to the same number of available codes. So this is our formula. Remark, you should notice you should notice that, uh, well, if I have n choose 0, that happens to be 1, because there is only one empty subset. And that, uh, to make it work, we will require zero factorial, because think about it, right? We have the formula n choose zero, we want the formula to still work. That would be n factorial divided by zero factorial, n minus zero factorial. So what we get is one divided by zero factorial. In order to make this uh, sensible, I am going to say that 0 factorial is by definition 1. Let's consider this example. 
So suppose that uh, we have a set of four students, just like over there. We have a set of four students, and three of those students will be selected to go to the Greenwood tree. How many choices of three individuals out of the four are possible? So here you can see the individuals are wearing numbers one through four. And uh, how do I indicate uh, the individual selected? Well, look at it. If, if this is the situation, if I selected individuals one, two, three, and four, and four was, I'm sorry, not selected, and then uh, how many repetitions? So we have this code. We have the code one, two, three in a box, and four separately. Uh, we equally can, have, can, uh, can write this code as two, one, three. And this is four, right? Uh, any, any ordering uh, of the first uh, three numbers indicates that one through three were selected. It doesn't matter if two is, uh, two is the left post or not. What matters is who is in the selected box and who is in non-selected box. So what does it mean in the documents? I can imagine, how many repetitions are there going to be of, uh, of the situation? Uh, how many calls are there? for the situation where the three individuals were selected and the last fourth individual was rejected. So if, if, you, if it were a document, you can see that in the rejected box, there is always a four. And uh, in the selected box, uh, there is one, two, and three. And uh, the second document might be two, one, three, and there will be three factorial rearrangements, right? That would be, the R in this case is uh, three, three factorial rearrangements, and therefore there will be six documents in the pile. Now, I can always imagine that uh, the document on the top is the one where the selected numbers appear in the right order, one, two, three. Okay, so I can always imagine that the top document indicates uh, the, this box is filled in correct order. So, for example, if I selected uh, two, three, and four, uh, then it will be it would be two, three, and four written here in increasing order. If I selected one, uh, three, and four, I will have to write one followed by the next biggest number followed by the next biggest number. So, one, three, and four will be the top document. If I staple all those documents together, I can identify the pile with the very top document. So the very top document, in that sense, if the numbers are listed in order, now indicates a uh, representation of the full pile. And so if I am not allowing permutations, you see I, I did not divide this box by bars. If I'm not allowing uh, permutations of this code, so for example, if I'm claiming uh, 213 is not a legible code, but uh, 123, if it's in order, it's a legible code, then I can make it uh, one to one. And notice what happens then, right? How many documents do we have? Uh, we have uh, six piles, so we have altogether four factorial documents if I print every, every, every sequence of numbers. And I need to divide that four factorial by, uh, by the number uh, of documents in each pile, and that would be by three factorial, and in this case, uh, or one factorial. And therefore, the number is simply four factorial over three factorial, which is four. So I selected small numbers where uh, you can maybe get a, a sense of it. You have to imagine it first for small numbers and then uh, extrapolate uh, to the situation where actually going through the documents one by one will be very difficult. Right here you could have just figured it's four by deciding who was the excluded individual. It is either four or three or two or one. So clearly there had to be four outcomes. So now let us consider this problem. Suppose we have a group of five women and seven men, and we wish to select two women and three men to serve on the committee. How many outcomes are possible if that's the situation? So I imagine a document that has two boxes. In the first box I have uh, two place, two placeholders for numbers and in the second box I have three placeholders for numbers. 
So I imagine that the women are labeled one through five and the men are labeled one through seven. So suppose that uh, on this committee we chose uh, woman number two and woman number five. Then I will require the document to be filled with the smallest number first, so two and five. I will not allow five and two. And for the men, let's say the chosen men were um, one, four, and seven. So I will have to write it like this, one, four, and seven, in increasing order. So now, this document, how many outcomes are there for the first experiment? The first experiment is then selecting the two uh, women chair, uh, chair people. So what we have is uh, five women, out of them two are chosen. Five choose two. Right? So remember uh, how this device was built. We, we allowed all the permutations, five factorial divided by two factorial and divided by three factorial. Uh, that was to group it into piles. And then, uh, the way I will view it now is that I can reduce it to one document where the entrance here is always uh, two numbers and the two numbers are written sequentially. So I know now how to fill in this box. There are five choose two, man, uh, for choose, uh, five choose two possibilities to fill this first box because uh, for any two numbers I pick, I can always arrange them from smaller number to the larger number. Uh, now, for this situation, I have, um, I have to select three numbers, and that makes it seven, choose three. Now, by the basic principle of counting, uh, this experiment always has, uh, well, it has five choose two outcomes. For every outcome of first experiment, I have seven choose three outcomes for the second experiment, and so by the basic principle of counting, I simply multiply those two numbers together. What now? Now suppose that uh, two of the men are refusing to serve together, which means that I cannot just select arbitrary three numbers and place them in order and put it in that box. So what I can do is uh, I can just look at men and I can see that there are seven choose three possibilities for the men, but some of those possibilities are not uh, viable because there they have two men together. So how many of them will have the two men together? Let's suppose that the two men are uh, men one and men, uh, and men two. So that means that uh, I have to subtract uh, the, possibility, the situation where I filled in, in the map box, where I have the number one and the number two. If I already have the number one and the number two, there, is only, uh, there are only um, seven minus two numbers available to me because I used up one and two, so there are only five numbers available to me. And I have to select one number. So this is how many ways to fill in the men box now. There is only one number required. And women, we have no restriction as before. There are just two numbers that go there. Right? So for men, we, only, we now have a different uh, number that we place over here. And then th therefore, what we have now is that the solution is... 5 choose 2, that's how many outcomes are in experiment 1, but for experiment 2, I have 7 choose 3 outcomes minus 5 choose 1. And now that is uh, the solution. Now you could have observed, of course, that we can uh, calculate the number of men another way. This would have been the same if we decided to uh, first calculate uh, the number of outcomes where the two voiding men are not available to us, and that means uh, we would have uh, five choose three. In other words, men one and men two are excluded. There are additional five 
possible candidates of them I choose three plus uh, plus what plus five and uh, choose two and that means that maybe one is included two has to be excluded and I have to adjoin two members to the committee so this means uh, uh, enemies not uh, enemies not in the committee so both not in this means enemy one in and we have another five choose two by symmetry where enemy two is in okay so you could have used uh, this so so this number equals to five choose two for the women and here we have five choose three for the men plus twice five choose two that's also a viable solution those two numbers are the same and now let's consider the situation see if we understand it so we have 10 women and 16 men a committee has to contain um, seven women and nine men however five men will only serve together so they are either in committee or altogether out of committee and there are two women that refuse to serve together how many ways to fill in the, this information so let's see let's begin with uh, with the men here I, uh, I have a code consisting of of nine numbers the numbers have to be written consecutively from smallest to largest similarly for women I have seven numbers that have to be written consecutively but not all consecutive numbers are possible so for men I have the friends are either all in or the friends are all out so how many possibilities are there so there are 16 men minus 5 choose choose 9 minus 5 this indicates that 5 friends in plus we have outcomes where you see there are going to be 16 minus 5 why minus 5 again in both cases I deal with the package of five friends by either placing them inside the numbers let's say the men are, that are friend are 1 through 5 there I either see the string begins with 1 through 5 so if I see 1 I have to see 2 3 4 5 and if I don't see 1 I have to see numbers that are bigger than uh, or equal to 6 so this means 5 friends are in and that means that additional numbers after I, I see 1 and then I see all the way to 5 and additional 9 minus 5 numbers are required to complete the committee now if they are all out I do not see numbers 1 through 5 so I have 16 minus 5 choices of numbers and out of them I must pick a whole nine numbers so that's uh, five friends out what about the women well the women we can group ten women out of them we have to choose seven so we have to list seven numbers in order to fill in this form however not all orderings are possible so let's say if I have uh, one I cannot have two if I have two I cannot have uh, one one and two are the two women that don't like each other so then I take 10 to 7 minus 
10 minus 2, choose 7 minus 2. That's, the, that's how many inputs are possible. That's how many codes are possible in this first form, and this is how many codes are possible in the second form. For a total number of 10, choose 7, minus 8, choose 5, multiplied, that's by the basic principle of counting that uh, the boxes represent the experiments and between them we can multiply so that is um, that is 11 choose 4 plus 11 choose 9 and that's the outcome that's how many outcomes we have Here is a somewhat challenging problem. So you have n antennas, m of which are defective, and n minus 1 and n minus m of them are functional. So imagine that the defectives are not distinguishable among themselves. So in other words, let's try to draw the situation. Imagine that the functional antennas look like this. So there is one, there is one, so this is first, second, and how many functional there are n minus m functional. Functional. And they um, cannot be distinguished among themselves. The defective antennas, let's say, is antenna 0. And how many do we have? We have M that are defective. And they cannot be distinguished among themselves. We want to see how many arrangements are there of uh, antennas that are defective and antennas that are functional in such a way that no two defective antennas are consecutive. In other words, I want to know how many strings of numbers made out of zeros and ones are there in which I don't allow two consecutive zeros. How can we solve that problem? Well, one way to think of it is although I cannot distinguish the functional antennas and I cannot distinguish the defective antennas, I perhaps can distinguish which places are occupied by defective antennas. So we can do it like this. So suppose I have a first defective antenna and there is a space in front for one. So there is a functional antenna, there is a space in front and a space after for to, be, to possibly be occupied by a defective uh, antenna. So then we have the next and there is a space before, space after, the next space before, space after, and so on until we reach the very last functional antenna. So this is one, two, three, all the way to n minus m. How many spaces are available for us? The number of spaces are available to, uh, to us, it's, it's two at it. Uh, I can count the spaces following one. So there is one here, there is two here, there is 3 here, all the way to n minus m, and plus 1 extra space. So total number of spaces is n minus m plus 1. The plus 1 comes because I have this extra space. Now, those uh, spaces, some of them are going to be picked to house a uh, defective antenna. What must be the case? Well, n minus m plus 1, I have to choose m spaces to be housed by the N antenna. So I will select choose M. And this number will be the number of strings of uh, zeros and ones where no two zeros are consecutive. Right? So but the trick in this problem was to shift uh, from the objects uh, that uh, are not distinguishable to counting 
uh, something else to count the space. We will see the strategy used again. Uh, so that's where we shift from the immediate objects and look at something else that we can in fact distinguish. In this case, uh, we have distinguishable spaces and we have n minus n minus m plus 1 distinguishable spaces out of which m spaces will, will house the defective antennas. And that's our solution. 